I am back with more reader questions to answer about The Boy From Tomorrow. This batch comes from Luciana, so thank you very much for this, Luciana. Question one. What inspired you to write The Boy From Tomorrow? The short answer is that I was inspired by a favorite novel of my own when I was growing up. I was in fourth grade when I read Tom's Midnight Garden, which was assigned in school, and I fell completely in love with this book. I don't have my personal copy to show you because I left it at my mom's house, but uh, I've read it I think three times now and I need to read it again. Uh, but it's a classic English fantasy, a wonderful time slip novel. I highly recommend it, and I was so excited reading this book as a child and then rediscovering it as an adult that I wanted to give readers that same sense of excitement about reading a novel and dipping into that world. Did you get to choose your cover? Authors almost never get much of a say in their cover design unless they're self-publishing, in which case they have complete creative control, but the editorial team, the sales team, they hopefully love the book as much as the author does, and they're really dedicated to finding the perfect illustrator and cover designer for that title, and most of the time they succeed brilliantly. My illustrator is from Poland, and I'm sorry in advance for messing up her name, but it's Agnieszka Gorczalska, and she is amazing. If you check out her website and Instagram feed, you'll see just how versatile an artist she is. I could not be happier with the job she did on The Boy From Tomorrow. How much research did you do for this story? Quite a bit. There were two main things I had to learn about in order to tell this story. I had to learn about everyday life in the early 20th century, and I include the women's suffrage movement in that category because if I were alive back then, I know that getting the vote would have been my number one priority. I grew up right down the street from this house, which is the home of a prominent suffragist, and at some point I learned that, like many if not most white suffragists, she was actually a racist. And that hypocrisy inspired Lavinia's disconnect between her so-called spirituality and her willingness to live a very comfortable life using the money of industrialists who were making a poop ton of money off of World War I. Lavinia would have been a racist white suffragist, too. And that leads me to the second topic, spiritualism. Here is a peek inside the research binder I kept while working at the National Library of Scotland back in 2011. Spiritualism is a belief system that was quite popular from the mid-19th century into the early 20th, when grieving parents would visit mediums hoping to reach their sons who had been killed in the Great War. The central idea of spiritualism is that there are two worlds, this ordinary reality, and a higher spirit plane where life continues after death. And the idea is that a medium can penetrate the barrier between these two worlds so that the living can receive guidance and comfort from their departed loved ones. Needless to say, most of the people who advertised themselves as mediums were totally faking it, but there were a very small minority whose abilities were never defrauded, even though they were studied quite extensively. Lavinia Clifford is based on a medium named Leonora Piper, and if you're interested in learning more about her, you should definitely Google her. I also highly recommend Deborah Bloom's book, Ghost Hunters, William James, and the Search for Scientific Proof of Life After Death, which I will link to in the video notes below. You can read more about all historical topics touched upon in The Boy From Tomorrow in the Classroom Reading Guide, which is available on my website. That's it for this round, but there will be at least one more of these videos coming soon, thanks to Luciana. And thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff if you enjoyed this video. And I'll catch you in the next one.